for tuning in. This is Octavados coming with another video review. And thanks to the folks at Big Bad Toy Store as well as Fans Toys, today we'll be taking a look at the new Fans Toys FT04 Scoria. Their interpretation of what a masterpiece slag would look like if Takara ever did one. <laughs> Honestly, even if Takara did do one, I might not even care because this one is so good. Now, some time ago, you, you may remember Fans Toys did their Quake Wave, which was their interpretation of a masterpiece shockwave. That thing was incredible, and a lot of people were really anxious to see what they would do next. And I'm happy to see that they're doing the Dinobots. This guy follows suit with as good as Quake Wave turned out. Now, one thing that I will say is that this is not a final version. Much like my Quake Wave one, this is an advanced sample. But it is pretty much final. There's a few tweaks still left to be done before the official one really releases. Now, mostly it's just tightness with some joints and you know, altering some of the color on them. But... I'll touch on that here in a little bit. But honestly, much like my Quake Wave figure, I don't notice that much in terms of any quality problems. The plastic on here is exemplary. The, the figure doesn't have as much die cast as Quake Wave did, but it is a bigger figure overall, so it sort of offsets if you ask me. Die cast wise, at least in dinosaur mode here, you got it with his horns, uh, both horns do have the die cast. His dino feet on all four legs have die cast. Uh, these are his his feet in robot mode. Those have die cast as well. Um, I'm trying to see what else. You, you just I kind of feel it in uh, whatever is cold uh, has is that that's my indicator for what's die cast. But this guy really is outstanding. Now, I do apologize if the, the chrome is coming off badly because of my white background. Uh, I do not have a darker background for this new setup, so. But I still think that you can see and make out just how great this guy looks. The amount of detail on here is incredible. Zooming in so that you can see that a little bit better. I really like the chrome blue eye that he has in here. Uh, he does have a mouth. Obviously, it does open. And then when you do open it up, he does have a little, uh, if I can get it to lift up, he does have a little flamethrower in there uh, you can kind of make that out right there which is really cool I totally dig that but great detail even around the the, the crest here you got some really nice detail on there coming down here to the body itself you can see a lot of wires and mechanical bits come around to the top you got some more of that carrying over some just excellent molded detail all the way throughout even on the feet you can see that on the bottom there is like no robot junk uh, i mean that is really really impressive uh he does have a um posable tail here on the back it's in this chrome coloring as well you can move it left and right it moves up and down what's this oh that that's just for the the locking mechanism um this you can see it also rotates left and right so this this likes popping up uh that's probably something that'll be tightened down the final one uh you can see that this is a bit of a ball joint so a nice range of motion with that tail and then it at the very tip it just moves forward and back so outstanding detail on here all the way across i mean it, it really is an absolutely wonderful representation of slag i think you got some more chrome up on the top section <laughs> now let's take a look at some comparisons uh starting things off first here you have him next to the g1 slag uh there is a lot of similarities that you can sort of see uh one thing that people have i guess criticized about is that he doesn't have the clear head with the gold underneath it it's all this gold chrome i actually prefer this i think it looks a little bit better but I can't understand where some people would like to have that look, uh, especially if they want their, their Scoria to represent slag in a masterpiece display based off of how the G1 toy looked. Uh, he does have the clear bits like, like the G1 figure had in the legs, uh, it, primarily here in the back, because I don't know, but you do have the, the clear bits here on the... Uh, shoulders i guess uh, but then again the tail you got the gold chrome whereas this one has the clear smoky plastic with a little bit of gold bit in there so uh but i mean size wise there you go that's that's what you're looking at for another comparison, uh, I, I do apologize. I can't remember who it was, but I told them that I would use Prowl for a comparison. Prowl definitely would not show up well with my background. That much I know. So I used the same mold, but I just used Blue Streak. So there you have the uh, size comparison between the two. And I mean, you can see just how big a dinosaur is. This is really a very nice representation. Uh, dinosaurs are huge, and <laughs> the 
this little, he's tiny, using a little bit bigger of a vehicle. Here's MP10. Now, that is what Scoria is based off in terms of the scale. MP10 set the standard for how Takara is gonna be doing their, their figures from now on. And all figures after that, pretty much scale based on the cartoon. This is what this is meant to be in terms of a scale. So as you can see, uh, a flat nose truck is a very large truck, but a dinosaur is gonna be bigger. So again, this scale for me works very nicely. But here it is, this is a scale I'm sure a lot of you guys really wanna see. Here you have Scoria next to Masterpiece Grimlock. Now again, Grimlock is a much smaller figure than what they're going for in their, their new, I guess, Masterpiece scale. Grimlock should be a much larger figure, and the folks at Fans Toys did do a good job of making this look good. Uh, I do not think that these two guys look bad in dinosaur mode at all. This is just about perfect. I love this scale. Now, Grimlock in his robot mode gets a little bit short, unfortunately, but that's where this comes in. Uh, this actually, it separates and there are little additions to his feet so he can stand a little bit taller and scale better. Yeah, you fold these out and then literally it just sticks on them right there. That That's where they have them storing it, but they're meant to actually in increase how tall he is. So we'll touch on these in a little bit when I do the comparisons in the robot mode. But like I said, dinosaur mode, I do not think that this is bad whatsoever. This is a great, great scale. And honestly, for me, <laughs> I keep Grimlock in his dinosaur mode. So Scoria more than likely is gonna be in dino mode right next to him. So it's not gonna bug me really that much. Now in terms of the uh, articulation, like I showed you here going on with the tail, you got a lot of it. The the shoulders here uh, for the dinosaur mode up here, these are the shoulders, obviously in the robot mode, they move forward, back, they move in and out. They bend here uh, the way that they should bend, bending forward like that. You got some pivot here in the toe. This bends forward, back. These are also on ball joints, so you get a nice range of motion with those uh, the head will look up that far looks down that far uh, like i said he does have his mouth that comes out you got blah, 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 blah. that's a very bad impression but beyond that that's about it for his articulation uh some people complain because he looks in this popped out uh a little bit long and <laughs> Uh, a lot of people are likening him to the shape of a potato. And uh, yeah, he does have that shape, but honestly, the Triceratops have that sort of longer body. So again, I think it's a nice representation of uh, how a Triceratops would look in real life if it was actually a, a giant robot. Now the transformation for this guy is actually pretty simple. I mean, you, you see how it looks here. It, it beautifully comes together in terms of robot mode. So first what I'm gonna do, you're coming around here to the front, take these, these bottom sections here are actually on double hinges. You wanna be careful when you're doing it, but get them both folded up so that you can fold it flush along the other part of the, the chrome here. So get it up like that. And then as you can see, these do position. So you wanna angle these in, and then you're just going to lift this and set this on the back, and then you can put these back just like so. Can flop that over, get that out of the way. Come around here to the tail, you're going to loosen this whole section up and fold this up along his back, and then this tail bit here, you kind of straighten this out, push this little button down, and you can collapse the entire tail, uh, the lower section of the tail up and in, and then just bring that up and around, and you're just gonna leave it like so. You can come around here to the bottom, these side bits just detach, come out to the side like so you're just gonna leave those flopping it's very similar honestly to how the g1 transformer transforms which i think really helps the the overall engineering for this guy then you kind of come around here to the back split this these peg in like the two legs to form this back section peg in very tightly so give that a good squeeze it does require a little bit of effort to pull them out rotate this all the way out do that on this side as well Come around here to the, the feet. You have this section on the inside. You want to fold this down, then take this, fold this, and then fold this. Then with these legs, you're going to split them, split them right here along the middle, bring these up, and it's kind of hard to see, but there's a little notch section right on the inside here that grooves right in there. So just bring this up, lock that down, just like so. Doing that on this side as well, bring this up, lock that into place, keep that all the way down, and then this whole section will rotate around and come to the inside of the leg, just like so. Straighten that out, collapse this, 
at this. It's kind of heavy. There we go. All right. It was. I didn't have this pushed all the way down. Then you bring this, lock that down, bring this up, lock that in place as well. Then you rotate the leg, and you can see that it nicely hides all that robot stuff. So doing that on this side as well, rotate this out. Make sure you get these all the way tabbed down and in. There we go. Take this section, fold this, fold this, fold this bit down, rotate this whole section down like this, bring it inside, lift this up, that latches into place, that side does as well. Keeping this all around, rotate these at the thigh, do that on this side, straighten these, and it's very much like Grimlocks, how they're angled like this, but getting that all rotated around, there you have his legs. Coming up to these arms, just gonna rotate these down. This bit right here, well, let's take this. You want, you got a double hinge here, you gotta swivel this back, which then puts the lower jaw deeper in the dinosaur head. So do that, then you can detach that, bring out his other head, bring that down, his other head, his robot head, put that right back up in there, bring this, up and lock that there. Come around here to the back. Now this kind of looks like a big giant mess, but it all folds in fairly nicely. You can see a cavity right up underneath here. You just bring this around, but you also got a couple slots here and here that these are actually gonna peg into. So bring that in, push that all the way in like so, that locks that down. And then you, what's really cool is it's like there's a gap right here that fit uh, when you wanna angle these little wing bits up. It's really, it's really interesting, the, the engineering that they did with this. Uh, it's very impressive, so bring that up just like so. It's real cool, I mean, it, I love how everything fits where it's supposed to, even, even gaps. So then just take this, fold that down like so, straighten out his legs, come around here. These have a little section underneath, then rotate that around, bring his hands out, lock that into place, do that on this side as well push that out come on there we go bring it out lock that back up into place position his horns in the proper way get him situated and boys and girls there we have scoria transformed into his robot mode now starting off with some of his accessories in addition to the head that's on him right now you do get an alternate head uh, the heads are exactly the same except that you can see that it's got a different face now depending on which version you want to recreate for your own collection me personally i like the red face because it matches more with the cartoon you can have a silver face with just a regular uh, closed mouth which is identical to what i have on right now like i said it's just silver or you have another Another silver face with an open mouth and then you have another red face that has an open mouth so it's your personal preference what you want to do for a display like I said it depends on what kind of version you want to create for your display one thing that I will mention right up front is that the red actually on his chest as well as the head are not final colors it's gonna have a much more glossy color on the final one much like what we saw with the, the actual teaser images so the coloring on here is off but you basically get the right idea but again the face sculpt is really very nice i i do dig it and it, like i said it, it's a personal preference kind of thing what you like to look at for me as i said i like the the actual cartoon look now some people will want the g1 toy with the black head but for me this is perfect in addition to those faces you also do get his gun which is a very nice chrome bit and you got a red tip for it you got now just a solid black handle but what's cool is that you got a button here that when you push it it blinks you can see it's it's shooting at you, which that's actually kind of neat. I, I dig how it's actually a, a blinking, pulsating kind of blast. Now, batteries are not included with this. Uh, I'll put a link in the video description to, or I'll tell you in the video description the, the battery sizes that you guys will need. But there you have his gun, which is really nice. And then he also comes with a really nice looking sword. Again, you got red chrome instead of the, uh, the silver chrome. And much like the actual uh, gun, you push a button down here and the whole thing lights up. It, it, it is harder to see because of the, the brightness of my lights, but you can see it and it lights up really nicely. Even not just looking at it in person, it looks really good. Uh, sitting here, not looking at my camera, I can see it show up really nicely. So uh, unfortunately, the it's not coming across very well on the camera, but 
absolutely gorgeous looking sword. And then of course, the most controversial accessory that it comes with are Grimlock's shoes. Now, for a size comparison, let's start that off real quick. Uh, there you have Scoria, and here you have Grimlock. And this is a big problem. Now, people are automatically gonna say that this guy is too big, but what you have to remember is that this was not necessarily the scale that the, the Masterpiece figures were going for. It wasn't until MP10 that came around that redefined the basic scale size. This guy is scaled with those new figures. So Grimlock, who was ridiculously short anyhow, looks even shorter. The Dinobots in the cartoon towered over the regular Autobots, even Optimus Prime. So what you got with these are platform shoes. So what you do to attach these, you just come around here to the bottom and they literally just slide in right there. Very simple and they hold on very nicely. So you just slide that in and now you have Grimlock who's at the head the exact same height. Now, people have complained about how goofy that looks and they kind of look like platform shoes, but I don't think they look all that bad to be totally honest. It, it doesn't bug me. A lot of people are gonna have the, the Dinobots if they're gonna display them kind of in the background and have the smaller guys in front. So you're not even gonna see that anyhow, but that makes them a little bit taller. But honestly, I don't think that really looks terribly bad. I, I think they did a really good job. The plastic color matches perfectly. Uh, you can see that they nicely lined up the, uh, the grooves here along the sides. So, uh, I mean, they even put a little bit right here, which kind of goes along with the other little bits here. Uh, I mean, I, I think it looks good. It gives a much more accurate look to Grimlock just in general. Now, by me saying that, uh, setting these guys off to the back here, here we have MP10. And you can see that, like I said, the real scale now is MP10. And this is a pretty much perfect scale, I'd say. I mean, Scoria looks a lot taller because he's got this whole section right here. But as I said, at the head, they are about the same. And that gives a much taller, uh, correct proportion in relation to the regular Autobots. And bringing in a couple of the extra regular Autobots, here you have uh, Sideswipe and Smokescreen. And again, these guys should tower over them, and Scoria does, and now so does Grimlock. And then for another comparison, here you have him next to his G1 self. And then for one final comparison, here he is next to the first release from Fans Toys, that being Quake Wave. And again, you can see that there is a wonderful scale going on between the guys. I just can't get over how huge this guy is and how nicely he fits with other Masterpiece figures. Now, as far as articulation, the guy has a ton. Uh, the, the head is a little bit more limited, but as you can see, this little dino head can move left and right, so you can get a little bit more of a twist. Uh, even if you keep it straight, you can get a, a full twist basically going that far. It goes up and down just a little bit. Not a heck of a lot, but like I said, it's... Its restrictions really are just basically because of the way that he needs to look. So I, I don't mind that at all. Uh, the shoulders here move in and out very nicely. They rotate. They could rotate all the way around, but his back junk here kind of gets in the way. Um, they do rotate at the upper part of the bicep. They bend here at the elbow. The wrists move all the way around. They also move forward and back. Now that you need that little bit of articulation to get him to very nicely hold the sword, uh, you have to angle it. So getting that in there, and there's a little slot on the inside. It's kind of hard to see, but getting that in there, oh, put it that way, getting that in, and then you wrap the hands around there. You do kind of have to keep the, the, the fists on this angle because that bit of the sword kind of gets in the way. It, it's not bad. I don't think it, it, it really disrupts too terribly much, but you, you do have to have it a little bit on an angle. Now with the gun, it's not as pronounced. Get that out of the way. Then bring in the gun. Uh, that, you actually get that lined up again. It's Like I said, it's a little bit hard to see from that side. There we go. Uh, the, the gun, you can see, because there isn't an extra bit here getting in the way of the form, you can keep that all the way up. So that's that fits a whole lot better, but the sword, I don't think it really is all that bad. All the fingers are articulated. Uh, they got ball joints here on, well, on the thumb. It's got a ball joint, and then each individual knuckle has an articulation joint. Come down here. He rotates at the waist, 
all the way around. Uh, and one thing that I am noticing on mine, and this was pointed out uh, before I even got the sample, that these kind of droop. Uh, that's something that is being fixed in the final version, so you won't have to worry about that, but they do rotate forward, back, they move in and out, they rotate at the upper part of the, the thigh, bends here at the knee, and you can hear some really nice clickety joints. Yeah, he's got pivot here going forward and back, and it's actually a bit of, it feels like it's on a spring right down here, because you, you push it and then it springs back, Then you can actually tilt it in and out, so you can get a wider pose with it as well. So all the articulation that you could want, is here in this guy and it's really very nicely done. Uh, the only die cast that you, you you get more of an appreciation for will be the feet here in robot mode. Uh, they are all die cast all the way down. And it gives a very, I mean, it doesn't have as much die cast as Quake Wave, but there is a very substantial weight to this guy. I mean, by comparison, this guy weighs one pound, 14 ounces, whereas Masterpiece Grimlock weighs one pound, five ounces. And that's even with this platform shoes on. Quake Wave weighs one pound, four ounces. So as you can see, less die cast, but more figure just in general, almost puts them to two pounds. I mean, everything about this guy is just really exquisite. Uh, you come around here to the back. I mean, that's what you're looking at for the back of them. I mean, somebody asked me if I uh, am uh, underwhelmed, if I'm if I got exactly what I expected, if it's more than I expected. Honestly, because we only had one other figure to compare it to previously, I'd say he's about on par with what I expected. They really impressed me with Quake Wave, and this is outstanding as well. Slag probably is my favorite of the Dinobots, followed very, very closely by Snarl. Uh, if if Slag is a 10, Snarl's like a 9.8. So it's really tough uh, to say which one's my favorite, but they did this guy justice, if you ask me. The only thing that he's missing, and they got a molded piece right there for you, is his Autobot logo. So a really, absolutely stunning figure. And if you want to remove the head, literally all you do is just pull it off. It's on a little ball joint. You get this out of the way. Uh, and just take the other one, pop it back on there. Uh, again, oops. It does require a little bit of pushing to get it on there. But uh, once you pop it in there, boom. Uh, and, and again, please do not look at the... the sort of looseness here in the hip area as a, a problem that all the figures are gonna have, it won't have those problems. I, I'm telling you right now, it's just because this one's not final. So to transform them back, first what you wanna do is position all these little fingers back the way they were. Kind of lift this up, fold this down, rotate that all the way down, and then bring that up like so. Do that on this side as well. Get that nice and flush, lift that, Fold that all the way down, and boom. And look, you got his uh, dino arms done. <laughs> Take this section here, rotate this down, pull this, well, if this didn't come down, fold that down too, then rotate the head down and in, put that down till that locks into place. That goes all the way down. Then take the, the mouth, pull it out, and like I said, it's on a double hinge, so just kind of flex that out till you get the, the jaw on a lower bit right there. Come around here to the back, just take this whole section, lift this out, get that out of the way, straighten out the arms, fold this down. You can bring this down like so. Do that on this side as well. Angle this down. I mean, you can see where the, the flaps come up like so, and then just bring that down. And then you take this section here and you push this in and locks into place. It actually uh, tabs by overlapping on the actual chrome bit here, which is really nice. I like the way that they do that. Then take these legs and, well, kind of is going to flop out. Fold this down, fold this down, just like so. Rotate this around on both sides. Take this uh, section here. You're going to separate that. Do that on this side as well. Take this, rotate this section all the way around. Again, the, the figure's kind of heavy, so it's hard for me to do it <laughs> like this. Fold that around, fold this bit up, and then you take this section, and you're gonna bring this in on itself, just like that, bring that along the line there. Then do that on this side, fold that, fold that, rotate this section down and around, make sure that you lift this flap up because if you don't, you won't get it to fit in here. And then you rotate this 
around like so. Bringing all this stuff, get that out of the way, bring this section down, lock that down, lock this bit down if I had it right. There you go. Push that all the way down. Make sure all of them are tabbed down all the way like so. Push that all the way down. Then you bring these two halves together and you do have to be, uh, there. there is some precision when it comes to lining these bits up. Uh, you do have to make sure that you have it lined up properly and get that lifted. Make sure that's, there you go. And then make sure that you give this a nice squeeze to get it completely lined up. And it, it requires a little bit of force to do it, but once you get it lined up properly and squeeze it, it creates a much better seal there. So then fold these down. Again, straighten those out. Those clip together like so. Rotate that down like so. Do that on this side as well. Rotate that out. Do that on this side. Boom. Rotate that down. Straighten out all of his arms and legs and such. Rotate this back. This is on a double hinge, so just rotate that back. Bring this down. Give this a nice little push. Line everything up. Bring it all the way down. Make sure all the panels line up, and then you just push that down and it locks into place. Take this tail. You got this back section right here, which is black. That's another little button. You push it, it releases that. So bring that down. Make sure you lock that all the way down. Come around here to the front, rotate that back, rotate these forward a little, then bring these down like so. Rotate these down, do that on this side as well. Kind of give that a nice little push. It doesn't go all the way back, you can see a little bit of a gap here, but uh, get it back so it's as far as it can go. And then angle these slightly out and Again, straighten out all of his arms, maybe open his mouth a little bit. And here you have Scoria back in his Triceratops mode. Now back when Fans Toys came out with their Quakeway figure, I instantly fell in love with how they designed their toys. And that continues on with Scoria. I really feel that the engineering on this might be even a little bit better than that on Quake Wave because you have a more realistic alt mode to try to cram it all into. And I think they did a outstanding job. Much like Quake Wave, I really do feel that this could be the best third party figure of the year. And it's only March. This guy is an absolute must have if you're a masterpiece collector. I cannot recommend this thing enough to you guys. At $200, the price I really do feel is perfect. This is masterpiece quality. And unlike a lot of other third party companies, they're not really ripping people off. I really feel that this is basically an official figure and the price really nicely reflects that as well. Now, if you are interested in picking this up, for me, the best place to get this is the place that helped me get it in the first place, that being Big Bad Toy Store. So if you are interested in picking this guy up, go ahead and click on the link down in the video description. You'll go to Big Bad Toy Store where this guy is available for pre-order and scheduled to come out in April of 2014. Beyond that, that's about it, guys. So once again, I wanna thank you for tuning in. This has been Optobotomous. Keep in touch with me. Find out recent purchases as well as all upcoming video reviews all at facebook.com slash teambottomus and by following me over on Twitter at twitter.com slash optobotomus. Also, don't forget to check out my new website at optobotomusreviews.com. And if you like this review, don't forget to please rate, subscribe, and share this video. And until next time, I'll talk to you later.